Hey guys, what's up everyone? How are you people doing? I'm hoping that all of you guys are doing good and taking very good care of yourself in these uh, times. You know how it is out there. So please take care of yourself guys. Anyways, welcome back to today's session. This is session number 544 wherein we'll be talking about circular motion, uniform circular motion, centripetal force as well as centrifugal force. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Anup Manoharan. I'm a master teacher of science here with Anto. A very, very warm welcome to all of you guys out there. Hoping that once again, you're taking very good care of yourself. Anyways, with that said guys, let us not waste any more time and get started with today's session wherein we'll be talking about uniform circular motion, centripetal force as well as centrifugal force. But before we get started, as always, you guys know the drill. We're going to have a quote and this is the quote for today guys. There is a brilliant child locked inside every student. So yes, people, I totally, totally believe this, that all of us are, you know, capable of doing something really great. You just have to find out what you're good at and then focus on that. It might not be, uh, you know, it might not be like what your parents are saying or what your teachers might be saying. But yes, you're definitely good at something. Focus on that. And I hope that, I sincerely hope that all of you guys would be able to unlock your true potential and, uh, you know, get to where you really want to be. All right, guys? Anyways, with that said, let us get started with today's session. So if you guys already are, uh, you know, know about the fact that we've uh, done four sessions of but I know of this chapter four, where we talked about talk and couple, equilibrium and principle of moments. We saw some questions based on uh, on uh, you know uh, equal uh, principle of moments, and also uh, we also talked about talk as well. We did some problems based on talk, and we also uh, in the last session we talked about center of gravity. Today our focus will be on understanding about uniform circular motion and centripetal and centrifugal force. So if you guys remember, if you haven't watched the video already, please do watch it, guys. This was the topic that is center of gravity, and in the last session i'd given you homework first of all i am so happy to see such amazing response from you people hopefully that you guys i hope that you guys continue to do the same so anyways the question was this where is the center of gravity of a uniform ball and i got such amazing answers from you guys and the answer to this question is if you draw out a ball with uh you know, if it's a uniform ball that means the mass of the ball is also distributed uniformly in that case you can say that the center of gravity would be at the geometric center which uh you know basically whatever is the circumference of circle so whatever is the the center of that particular ball that is where the center of gravity as well as the center of mass would be for a body for any kind of uniform body which is symmetric or you can say that which has a proper you know geometric shape for those the center of gravity would be in the geometric center i told you that in the last session so hats off guys so here are some of our superstars we have nithyagya praveena then we have harshit uh abhigna uh, habinandan uh, praveena again and also sahana congratulations guys congratulations now if you want your name to be here the next time make sure to subscribe hit that bell icon so that as soon as the video is out you guys are able to get notified and you can put on the answer in the comment section uh, right there and then all right guys anyway so that's it let's get started with today's session where we'll be talking about uniform circular motion all right so let's take an example guys let's take an example let's say a car is moving with a constant speed in a circular track okay perfect circular track he's moving with a constant speed now if i want to check the velocity of this body i can say that the velocity is not constant why so because the direction is changing at each and every point. So if I draw out a circle, when the body is over here, the direction is towards us. When the body is over here, the direction is towards us. So basically the direction of the body is changing at each and every point. So you can say that the velocity is not constant. Now, as I told you, the direction is a little, you know, uh, it's it's something that is, you know, acting, uh, you know, in tangent. So basically it's, it, this is called as a tangent. So it's acting tangential to the circle. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Now. If I want to check the acceleration of the body, I can say that the body is also accelerating because of the fact that the direction is changing. Now, here's the thing is, all this while, when you were, when you talked about gravitation or when you talked about acceleration, sorry, you've always dealt with the magnitude. So the value, the magnitude of the velocity was changing. You, you calculated it by using the formula A is equal to V minus U by T and you found out what is the body's acceleration. But in this case, we are talking about the direction. So if the direction of the body is also changing continuously, you can see that the body is accelerating. In terms of velocity, yes, the body is accelerating because the direction is changing at each and every point. All right, 
Now the question arises is what is the direction of velocity and what is the direction of acceleration? Now, I, like I told you guys, the direction of velocity is always going to be tangential to the circle. So what is a tangent first of all? Tangent is nothing but a straight line which basically touches uh, any point on the circumference of the circle. So if it touches a point on the circumference of the circle, that is what is called as a tangent. So here's the thing guys, when the ball is over here, the velocity is going to act basically towards, uh, you know, it'll be a tangent will be which you know it'll be a tangent which will be from this from the center it'll be it'll be a tangent uh, away from the circle so that is the reason why guys when you're basically if you take a ball and start rotating it if you suddenly leave it what will happen the ball will go in a straight line because why the direction of velocity is in a straight line which is tangential to the circle in other words it'll not move in a straight line it'll move tangential to the circle that is why the as soon as you leave it the ball would go in a straight line it'll not go curved it'll go in a straight line because the velocity is the direction of velocity is tangential to the circle now the question is if this is the case then why is the ball still you know moving in a circular direction if the velocity is acting this way the ball should continuously go that way itself why is it that the ball is still continuing to rotate in a circular direction that my friends is because of acceleration so the direction of acceleration when a body is moving in a circular direction or when, it's, when a body is moving in a circular path will be towards the center of the uh, the center of the circle it will not be away from the center it will be acting towards the center so the acceleration of the body would be towards the center whereas the velocity on the other hand would be tangential to the particular circle and this is why the ball continues to or if we talk about a ball or if you talk about the car anything for that matter would continue to see in that circular path because the velocity because the acceleration is acting towards the center now here's the thing is if the body is accelerating according to newton's second law of motion force is mass times acceleration right so if there's acceleration there should be some force as well yes guys there is the force of the body is also acting towards the center itself now why so because the acceleration is acting towards the center obviously according to newton's second law of motion whatever is the direction of axis whatever is the direction of the net force that will be the direction of acceleration as well because the acceleration towards the center you can see that the force is also acting towards the center according to newton's second law of motion this force that is acting towards the center is what is called as the centripetal force or centripetal force how you want to pronounce it as so it is the force that is acting towards the center because why the acceleration is also acting towards the center itself now the thing is guys if you have to sum it all up centripetal force is nothing but a center seeking force that is the force is acting towards the center and the body remains in a circular motion because of the centripetal force if we talk about you know the earth moving around the sun that is also it is also staying staying in its uh, orbit because of the centripetal force the moon revolving uh, around the earth that is also because of centripetal force that the moon is not going away from the earth it's all because the centripetal force because the force is acting towards the center you see that uh, you know the body continues to move in a circular path or i guess now the question that we don't understand is it's a center seeking force so why is it that all the planets earth and all the other eight planets uh, you know all the other eight planets that are there all these seven planets apart from uh, you know uh, excluding earth why are they not moving into the sun because the center seeking force so why is it not going and colliding with the sun here's the thing guys there is another force of the same magnitude but acting in the opposite direction that force my friends is what is called as the centrifugal force so centrifugal force is nothing but a force which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction that means this force is acting away from the center so the force that is acting away from the center is what is called as the centrifugal force but there's a catch to centrifugal force guys centrifugal force is actually a pseudo force or it's a false force it does not actually exist it all depends on the frame of reference now what do i mean by this for example guys i'm pretty sure you have all gone on a merry-go-round like you know you basically go uh, round and round like in parks and all you can see that kids are playing around with it now here's the thing is when you're standing when you're sitting inside the merry-go-round you might feel like everything is trying, you know, basically you might experience a force uh, that uh, that makes it feel like, you know, you're, uh, you're going away from the center. But the fact is, guys, when a person is standing on the outside, he will not, he will not, you know, he will not be experiencing it. More importantly, he will not see any such force. Now, that is what I mean by frame of reference, because 
for a person who's standing inside the circle inside the available you know and if you talk about the merry go round if he's standing on the merry go round for him there is the pseudo force or for him there's a force which is acting away from the center which is the centripetal force but for a person who's standing on the outside he would not see any such force for him there's no no such force at all so that's why it is called as a false force or in other words it's called as a pseudo force it's an apparent force it's not actually there but it all depends on the frame of reference it's like it's more or less like uh you know motion uh you know motion is also you know we take frame of reference for example if you're standing still uh right now i'm sitting still yes according to what according to the camera according to the laptop according to the table i'm standing still but if i go to the moon if a person goes to the moon and looks at me from there for him i'm in motion why because the earth is rotating and revolving around the sun so it's all frame of reference from where are you looking depending on that here also you can say that centrifugal force uh, exists and it does not exist also depending on the frame of reference so it's called as an apparent force it's not actually true all right now before we get into the quiz uh today i have an amazing surprise for you people guys and the surprise my friends is this you guys already know about the master talk with achievers last time we had uh, vidya mala uh, vidya balan ma'am before before that we also have deepika Padu padukone ma'am as well so this time on 28th of august the coming 20th of august we're going to have pv sindhu ma'am who's renowned is a you know badminton player you guys already know about her many of you are well aware of her she is a youth icon she is one of the you know she's one of the inspirations to all of uh, all of us out there not just uh, you know for a, a particular person it's like for everyone she is an inspiration and uh, she is one among the top badminton players in the world and i'm not just talking about india but in the world itself and she is going to be talking uh, on vedantu platform on 28th of august exactly at 7 pm so if you guys want to see her talk this is the link you have to register to it so basically click on this link register to this uh, as soon as you can it is https uh, colon backslash backslash vdnt.in slash sindhu so try it out i mean uh, book a seat so that you can uh, you know watch this amazing person talk about her life what are her uh, goals and what made her reach to where she is right now okay so that is my surprise i hope to see all of you guys out there i'll also be there see you guys over there with that said guys let us now solve some questions based on what we have seen right now now there are no particular you know there are no uh theoretical questions i mean these are all theoretical questions there are no uh you know uh i would say there are no numericals per se so let's try to solve some questions i want all of you guys to try out the answers and let me know in the comment section below pause the video and i want you guys to try it out all right so here's the question guys the first question centrifugal force is a real force a force of reaction of centripetal force it's a fictitious force or it's directed towards the center of the circular path what exactly how do you define a centrifugal force and the answer to this question is is option number c it is a fictitious force because like i told you it's a false force it's a pseudo force so in the sense it's false it's not actually there it's all about the frame of reference so it is a fictitious force second question is which of the following remains constant when a body is moving in uniform circular motion the velocity is the one that remains constant the speed is the one that remains constant the acceleration is the one that remains constant or both velocity and speed remains constant when a body is moving in uniform circular motion what what is that one thing that actually remains constant and the answer my friends is option number b which is nothing but the speed the speed is the one that remains constant because speed is not dependent on direction velocity is constantly changing or uh, because the direction is changing acceleration also changing so you can see that speed is the only one which remains constant everything else would basically be changing at each and every point of time all right guys so that is the answer moving on to the third question people here we go a piece of stone tied at the end of a thread is whirled in a horizontal circle name the force which provides the centripetal force name the force which provides the centripetal force the force of compression in the thread the force of tension in the thread no force or the force of gravitation in the thread what is that one thing that leads to the uh, centripetal force is it the force of compression on the thread so imagine uh i know imagine like you're standing in the center and you're uh tied uh, you've tied a ball to a you know like a string yeah that looks like i've stung it to this head anyways so you start when you start rotating it obviously you see that there is uh, it starts moving in a circular direction so you're uh, in a you know uniform circular motion let's say that it's moving at uniform circular motion what is what what is that that leads 
to the centripetal force what leads to what force leads to that uh, centripetal force that is the question force of compression force of tension no force or force of gravitation in the third the answer to this question guys is actually option number b it is the force of tension that actually leads to the centripetal force so here's the thing guys there is tension basically there's tension between the thread and the stone that tension is what is providing the force that is needed to keep it in a circular path and that is the force that so if you talk about you know if you talk about the earth and the uh, the moon or the earth and uh, the sun that is gravitation it is the gravitation force that is actually providing that centripetal force here in the case of a string it is this it is the tension of the string that actually keeps it in a circular path so it is the tension that provides the centripetal force which keeps the body in the uniform circular motion that you need all right so that, that is the answer moving on to the last question for the day here's the question a small pebble tied at one end of a string is placed near the periphery of a circular disc at the center of which the other end of the string is tied to a peg the disc is rotating about an axis passing through its center what will be your observation when you are standing in outside the disc explain that and what will be your observation if you are standing at the center of the disc so it's actually a pretty simple question guys so my, okay first of all understand the question a small pebble is tied at one end of a string so you are and it's placed at a so there's a circular disc it is placed on a circular disc and basically it is uh, the one the okay it is so there, there's a peg in the center so it is tied to that i'm really sorry about my drawing guys my drawing skills are really really bad so yeah so that is what what it looks like so basically there's a pick in the center and there's a disc and the uh, uh, stone is tied to it and is rotating uh, in that circular direction so uh, rotating about its center so you're, uh, you're supposed to find out what would be your observation when you're standing on the outside and what would be your, your observation if you're standing exactly on the peg and that is uh, the question so the answer to this question is for the part when you're standing on the outside you see that the body is moving in a circular path you can see that the body is moving you know, in a uh, uniform circular motion or in a circular path, you can say that if, uh, because you have they not mentioned that the speed is constant. So you can say that the body is moving in a circular path, the, body, the disc is rotating. So the pebble also seems to rotate. Awesome. But on the other hand, when you're standing on the center, you see that the, uh, the pebble appears to be stationary. Why does the pebble appear to be stationary? Because when you are standing in the center, you're also rotating along with the pebble. You're also rotating along with the pebble. So because you're rotating along with the pebble, you see that it is in the state of rest. For you, it appears like it is in the state of rest. Now, this is the same thing with, uh, you can give the example of a train. For example, imagine that you, you and your friend are sitting inside the train. If you guys are sitting still, according to your friend, you're in the state of rest. According to you, your friend is also in the state of rest. But let's say that your friend is on the inside the train and you're on the outside and the train is moving. For you, he is in the mo in the state of motion, but for him, he is in the state of rest because he is not moving at all. So it is all about frame of reference. So here also, the pebble, according to you, if you are standing on the disc, is in the state of rest because you are also you are also you know uh, rotating along with the pebble. But when you are standing on the outside, the pebble alone is rotating, and you can see that the pebble is rotating because again, it's a frame of reference. Okay, right? so that is it for today. With that said. Not yet, people. There's a homework. This is the homework for today, guys. Is it possible to have an accelerated motion with a constant speed? Name such type of motion. This is your homework. Find out the answer and let me know what is the answer in the comment section below. I hope to see your answers as soon as it uh, as though, as soon as it is out. So that's it, people. Thank you for joining. I hope you guys enjoyed today's session. Do uh, leave a like, share, and subscribe. Obviously, uh, uh, you know to get notified of any new videos that comes out uh, uh, in the channel. And also, if in, if in case you want to reach out to me personally, if you have a doubt, you can reach out to me at anup.manoharan at the rate vidanto.com. So that's my personal email ID. You can reach out to me on that. So that is it, guys. That is that is for today thank you for joining hope you enjoyed it see you all in the next one this is anub signing off for today take care of yourself stay safe guys bye bye take care